In the lab class, we're going to be investigating how different herbicides work. Herbicides are really important in modern agriculture. They're essential for protecting yields. With that, if we didn't use herbicides, then yields would be about 20 or 30% smaller on a global scale. However, herbicides are really expensive. They cost about $14 billion per year, and a lot of herbicide chemicals are really not very nice chemicals. So there's a lot of pressure in agriculture to find more efficient herbicides, more selective herbicides, so we can maintain yields, but without some of the environmental and health impacts that herbicides have traditionally had. So in order to investigate the herbicides, we're going to be looking at the rates of photosynthesis in the presence of different herbicides and trying to work out how they work. However, before we do this, we need to think about some redox chemistry because photosynthesis is all about redox. So um, redox chemistry is all fundamentally about electrons. So a molecule that is missing electrons uh, is referred to as being an oxidized molecule, whereas a molecule that has additional electrons is referred to as being a reduced molecule. And in biological systems, electrons effectively mean energy. So if you've got a reduced molecule, then that is, tends to be energy rich. So, uh, for example, glucose uh, is an energy rich molecule, not only because it's got lots of carbon in it, but because it's a reduced molecule, it's got lots of electrons uh, that it can then give up uh, when you respire it. However, in nature, we don't tend to have free electrons uh, kicking about. What we tend to have instead are reducing agents. So reducing agents have extra electrons that they can give away. So when you combine an oxidized molecule with a reducing agent, the reducing agent passes its electrons to the molecule and you end up with a reduced molecule. And photosynthesis is all about this process and ultimately about making a reduced molecule uh, called NAD. PH, or sometimes referred to as NADP reduced. So let's have a look at the process of photosynthesis. So here I've got either a plant or an algal cell, and I've got the chloroplast in the middle. And the whole point about photosynthesis is obviously to make sugars, but that's a multi-step process. Um, and the uh, photosynthesis doesn't make sugars directly. So sugars are made in the cytosol from molecules called triose phosphates. And those triose phosphates are reduced sugars. So they're three carbon sugars rather than six carbon, but they're reduced molecules they have got energy. So in order to make sugars, uh, we need to look at a process called the calvin benson cycle. This is sometimes called the light independent stage, but I don't like that terminology because actually a lot of the enzymes are themselves regulated by light. So the calvin benson cycle is a better name for it. So in the calvin benson cycle, we take CO2, so just only organic carbon dioxide, plus RUBP, which is a five carbon molecule, and we make... Uh, First of all, we make a molecule called 3-phosphoglycerate, so 3-PGA. However, that molecule is an oxidized molecule. It's not energy rich yet. We need to make, uh, make it more energy rich. So in order to do this, we need to have one of these reducing agents, which, as I say, is the molecule NADPH. So in order to go from 3-PGA to triose phosphate, which is what we're really interested in, we need to use up some NADPH and convert that back to NADP plus to the oxidized form. We also need a second bit uh, in this thing, which is we need some ATP. So we also need to put in some energy in order to make an energy-rich molecule. Uh, so uh, we uh, hydrolyze ATP uh, back to ADP plus phosphate. So in order for this stage of the uh, photosynthetic process to work, uh, we need to have NADPH and ATP. So where do those molecules come from? Well, those molecules come from what we sometimes call the light-dependent stages or uh, the light-dependent electron transport chain. So if we just move, uh, zoom in a bit to see what's going on here. So this process needs to make NADPH and ATP. So how does this work? Well, obviously, uh, in photosynthesis, uh, we've got the involvement of light. Um, so we have uh, in the in the thylakoid membrane we have an electron transport chain which is made up of some photosystems. So these are big proteins that have got protein and chlorophyll and some electron accepting molecules in there. So what happens is light uh, comes in and it hits uh, some of the chlorophylls inside the photosystem. 
in fact, uh, chlorophylls then pass energy between themselves um, in a process called resonance energy transfer, but eventually they'll hit a particular chlorophyll molecule in the photosystem. And at that point, that chlorophyll molecule is able to split off an electron, and that's called the photochemical event. Um, so it splits off an electron, it gives that electron to an acceptor molecule. Now, at the moment, chlorophyll without an electron is super, super reactive. It needs to get an, another electron from somewhere. So what happens is that we split water uh, to uh, give uh, oxygen uh, and some protons on the luminal side of the membrane, and that replaces the electron that was lost at the chlorophyll. That electron uh, that went to the acceptor then goes through a series of steps and there's some mobile carriers and there's some static carriers in there to form an electron transport chain. So the le electron is moving around uh, inside the membrane. Photosystem 1, the same basic thing happens. We have a chlorophyll that gets excited. Again, it passes energy uh, to other chlorophyll molecules and again, that chlorophyll molecule can split off an electron. In this case, we don't split water. That electron is, in fact, replaced by the electron that came through the rest of the electron transport chain. But at the end of the process, that electron is given to NADP plus to make NADPH at the end of the process. So it's a bit complicated, but what effectively we've done, using the power of light, we've taken an electron from water and we've given it to NADPH, which is the molecule we needed for the Calvin cycle. So that's taking care of the NADPH. What about the ATP? Well, uh, ATP, um, to make ATP, you need to have protons uh, on uh, across going across a membrane because ATP is made when you have protons going through an ATP synthase complex uh, and that powers the production of ATP. And this process over here, the electron transport chain, well, remember we made some protons there, but also protons get pumped across the membrane uh, at that point. So uh, because we've got the movement of electrons and protons, we can therefore make NADPH and ATP. Those are then going to power the Calvin-Benson cycle, so we can go from an oxidised form of carbon to a reduced form of carbon that can then be made to make sugars in the cytosol. So in this practical, we're going to use a redox-dependent indicator called DC-PIP. So um, what happens with DC-PIP is it starts off blue, so uh, this is DC-PIP here. Um, and when uh, DC-PIP receives electrons, it changes colour. So uh, here we've got um, a chemical called sodium dithionite, uh, and that's a really potent uh, reducing agent. It's got a lot of electrons that it can, it can give off. So if we watch what happens... Uh, when we add uh, the sodium dithionite to this DC PIP solution, you can see that quite quickly, in fact, the solution decolorizes, um, so it changes color in response to the amount of electrons that are present. So in this case, the electrons came from the sodium dithionite. But what we could also do is to use that to measure the rate of photosynthesis. So uh, remembering from the previous thing, we, so we usually have at the end, we've got photosystem one, which usually gives its electrons to uh, NADP plus to make NADPH. That's what usually happens within the photosystem. But what we're going to do instead uh, is to have at photosystem 1, because we've given it such a high concentration, instead of NADPH, we're going to give it some DC-PIP uh, in its oxidised forms. The uh, electron transport chain will then give those electrons to DC-PIP to make the reduced form. And because there's a colour change, that means that we can then measure that to get an indication of the rate of photosynthesis.